Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. This is Dr. Samaria Colbert. Uh, this is your first time viewing this from wherever you are viewing this from. I have a podcast. I'm on Instagram, on Facebook. I am on obviously YouTube. Uh, I guess I'm Dr. Samaria M. Colbert. I am a licensed therapist. I've been in the mental health field over 16 years. I'm like 18 at this point, but we're not counting. <laughs> I know I look like I'm 21, but I'm not darling. Uh, what else? Um, I'm a published author. I've written a little over 60 books. I believe I'm at book number 60, 63. Uh, my goal is a hundred within the next five to 10 years. Uh, I have just completed, literally, uh, just completed, I uh, just, uh, finalized everything this morning prior to coming to my office. And I have a, uh, another book that'll be out shortly called Esther's Grace, and uh, if you knew what I've been through, Hunter, you know I am truly Esther, okay? But I want to tell you how an, an extraordinary woman walks in extraordinary grace, uh, leading, loving, and doing it with grace. And uh, that will be out before um, before the end of the month, actually. And uh, I will, um, of course, promote that. And uh, what else um, about me? Oh, I have, like I said, I do have a podcast. Uh, I do have a private practice. That's where I'm located right now. I'm located in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I uh, do all kinds of dilly dallies. I have a clothing line, uh, date speaking engagements. I do them the most. <laughs> I'm not bragging, but I do like to have the intro, right? Um, what else? Oh, y'all. Thank you to my new subscribers. If you're watching this video, YouTube, listen, help a girl out. I'm so close. I think I'm 140. 40 maybe ish something a lot of, of, of people away from having my thousand subscribers now i've at this a minute so y'all just share it say subscribe okay if you like me you have multiple <laughs> uh email accounts subscribe to them too help us this out i'm so close to that thousand i'm just I'm a little excited, okay? I may not get there. I don't know when, but I'm gonna get there, all right? Uh, so subscribe to this channel. Um, today we're gonna talk about an interesting topic. It's called manners, common courtesy, and respect. Now, y'all, I was just sitting in the bed thinking about, hmm, this is what we doing. <laughs> you know, everybody has not been treated uh, with common courtesy, manners, and respect. Everybody has not been treated uh, that way. Um, and everyone has not been trained uh, to treat people in this manner. Um, and I gave you, the, let me give you this story. I'm kind of going off the cuff here, but uh, I told the story in a, in a brief reel uh, some years ago, mm, some years ago, that wasn't some years ago, it was a couple months ago, maybe. I don't even remember when. Um, I used to work inpatient. I worked with so many people from so many different walks of life. I'm very comfortable uh, meeting with people who don't look, sound, or believe the same way that I believe, because these have been my people. Uh, I'm comfortable with interacting with people whose lifestyle is different with mine. I still hold my values to be true. But I used to work in long-term unit at Dorothea Dix Hospital many moons ago, uh, kind of around my first start of my uh, career. For those who don't know, Dorothea Dix is a hospital that's since been closed. Uh, when I first got there, I was naive. I was fresh out of graduate school and um, I was scared. Because they didn't tell me till I got there that I was the social worker that was assigned to a long-term male unit. So you know where this is going. I knew I wanted to do what I'm doing right now. Uh, at that time, I didn't know about working with leaders. I really wanted to work with women who experienced trauma and 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 um and that uh that type of abuse. You understand? Um, and so I was ready. I was fresh out of graduate school. I'm a church girl. I don't know nothing about nothing. You know what I mean? I've been through some things, but I ain't I ain't I ain't the street chick. That ain't that ain't me. You know, I don't go toe to toe with nobody. So I got there, I get to the uh, long term unit, uh, and I realized they put me on a long term male unit. Not only did they put me on the long term male unit, um, I had people who are criminals, people that are facing charges, uh, guys. Some of them had um, got real charges for trauma. They had been they had been. Rhymes with grape, you know, I don't say that word on social media because it stuff gets blocked and flagged and whatnot. Uh, some of them, now this is not, I want to tell you this, when you go long, if you ever have to go into an uh, inpatient hospital for mental health, that it's not necessarily like that. I'm just telling you, they don't even have long-term units anymore. That's how long ago it was. Uh, I had guys that had done some time 
or or I had a few guys that were facing time. I had two guys on my caseload at that time uh, who were originally from the forensic unit. That that unit was full, um, but these guys were um, facing time, and they were on my unit. I was the social worker for their unit um, for criminal activity. Two guys who had ended someone else's life. I was their social worker. So you can best believe my good brothers and sisters, I was shouting. I was not shouting. I was scared in my boots. I said, God, this ain't me. What if I get hurt? Now, mind you, if you go to a place like this, it's actually very secure. It was, it was very, it was more similar to like a being incarcerated um, because like, and they're not like that now. Hospitals are not like that now. You don't have long-term units, but these are the units where we had to have lock and key. We had to have body alarms around my sis, our system. Uh, we had texts everywhere, cameras everywhere. It was a very scarce system. Uh, and I was scared. I was scared. I never forget the first time I got there, I went to uh, my unit and we had a called treatment team meeting. Treatment team meeting, all the clinical people, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, the clinical social workers, the uh, lab tech, the uh, what do you call it, the physical uh, therapy. We all meet at the beginning to discuss our cases. I never forget I get there. And we all in there, we on the unit, mind you, in, in our little office space. And I hear, bitch, you know, you better leave, bitch, bitch, bitch. And this guy was cussing and fussing. They, the text had to walk him out. Beep, I ain't going no beep, 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 you beep, 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 beep. And I was sitting there like, why am I here? Why am I here? Come on, Jesus. I'm, I want to be, I was, I didn't have my PhD at that time. I think I was in school and I just started one of my classes. I said, this is that got to be the devil. Got to be the devil. And so I'm sitting at treatment to you and thinking, I don't belong here. One of the social workers looked at me and said, she said oh, he's on your unit. He's on your caseload. I said, I said, excuse me. I said, the devil is a lie. I've got to go, honey. I was putting in my resume. God said, scenario, yea, the walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Fear no evil. You don't have to fear. I took Jesus and I took my nature. Now, I'm, now I was cute now. I was always cute. And I got on that unit and I worked it. And I had favor with those criminals, with those guys, the world that the church would shun. They would be ostracized. I had favor with those guys. You know why? It wasn't because I was just pretty. It wasn't because I, I was always respectful. I was always respectful. Hey, good morning, Mr. So-and-so. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning, Samaria. I was always the one. If you asked me, I wasn't a pushover now, but there's always a way to handle things. When you go high, nobody went got disrespect because they always know Samaria was nice. And guys, people tend to know when you really are authentically you. They are. And most men, I, I've learned I learned from that. I've always been a very respectful person, believe it or not. If I came out of pocket, it's because you, you forced me in the corner. But <laughs> I've always been very respectful that guys and people respond to respect and just being treated with kindness. So, hey, Mr. So-and-so, man. And I know these guys, some of these guys charge. Some of these charges, because we had access to their charts. I may mean, make a skin cr crawl, but I learned not to see people. I've learned that one God was willing to protect me and that I was safe and that I just needed to treat people with kindness, with respect, with dignity. And if I just did that, God would give me favor. And I was there and I stayed. And I loved working there. Actually, at the few weeks after I got over, I loved working there because I was consistent with my word. If I had one of some of my case, well, hey, can you call my family? Hey, can you do this? I said, if I couldn't do it right now, I wasn't going to lie. And I wasn't going to say, yes, I can, because I'm trying to get you to get fair. I said, well, I can't do it right now, but I promise you I'm going to come back for the end of the day and we'll work this out. If I was, they wanted me to do something, call their family, you know, see how much money they had on their books. Now, we don't give out money, but sometimes the guys will work off the th different places and, and okay, can you check my account? We will have access to all that. And so I was like, sure, Mrs. Owens, I can't do it right now. I'm going to group to do my group. But when I come back, I'm back around this time. I was always consistent in my behavior. What I said I meant, and I treated people with kindness. Good morning. How are you, Mr. So-and-so? Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? And they will always call me. <laughs> good morning, Samaria. And they would say, hey, how was your weekend? I say, it was good. How was your weekend? You know, as best as it could because you're in a locked facility. Hey, it was fine. You know, we did this. That's why the casual conversation good. Well, I, I'll see you at your group. You know, have a good day, blah, blah, blah. blah. And that was it. Just treat everything. I, I had favor. I had favor. And I get it. Wasn't because I was pretty. Wasn't because I was the smartest. Wasn't because I was the best. I was new out of graduate school, so I was going to make mistakes. I treated people with kindness. I say all that to say, you know, one of the things that, um, and this is just me, and I, I may get in trouble for this. Um, I have a problem. And, you know, I was raised in church all my life. I was raised in church all my life. 
Um, and that's why I was a little scared, honey. When I went up to these church folk, I was scared, okay? <laughs> when I went to that unit, I was like, this ain't me. You know, I, I was first out of college university, honey. I don't belong here. You know, I was all up in my fields. I'm a holly, you know. Honey, God will humble you real quick. You ain't from nowhere. Your degrees and it does not matter. And I I I find myself feeling um disappointed. That's the word, disappointed. Um, because if I have ever been disrespected by anybody, it wasn't those guys who were criminals. It wasn't the guys that um had charges. It wasn't the, the guys that people threw away. If I've ever been disrespected, it's been church people. It's been church people. It's somebody right now who looked me dead in my face and will not acknowledge I'm even in the room. I don't know. I will not acknowledge I'm even in the room. Save, sanctify, fill the Holy Ghost, fire, baptize. Jesus on my mind, I'm a prophet, I will be. Will not look me dead in my face. But I got the guy, the guys now, I got guys right now I used to work with. I was always respectful. Did time, incarcerated time. I'm telling you, if I tell you, I can't tell you people's records. Did time, time in a maximum uh, facility in, in prison, time. I'm talking about years. And because I treated them with kindness, treated them with respect. If I walk outside in a grocery store, run into somebody, they, hey, Samaria, how are you doing? If I ever been disrespected, it was never by the throwaway, throw, by the throwaways or the rejected. That's what probably get me in trouble. What I'm telling you, what it is. So we're gonna talk about manners, respect, and courtesy. But I, I think it's, it it says something when people who don't have God don't know God. Ain't walking with God, ain't thinking about God, ain't thinking about reading the Bible, are more respectful than people who are Bible scholars, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, five baptized, and you disrespectful. I've gone through so much in last, and I'm just telling y'all in the last few years, and it wasn't it wasn't those 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 folk. When I was for community mental health, I was I every now and again I had a, you know, because every now and then you get people just in their fields. Okay. Yeah, people will manipulate, you know, you do, but not the whole gist of them. Some of the people don't know God. Don't you know these people treated me better? I I you know, I'm we we gotta talk about manners. And if you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, how are you not as respectful as someone who has no orientation about who God is? Talk about respect. Are you ready? Let's get it. Um, it's important to know uh, that, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go all over for is how someone treats you. Watch this is a reflection of how they feel about themselves. I don't like me. Someone mistreat you. How someone treats you is a reflection of how they'll treat God. No matter what it looks like. I don't care how much you do. It, it, how they treat God. First Samuel chapter 8, because we're going to give you scriptural context. First Samuel chapter 8, round about the seventh verse. This is the New Living Translation. Um, it says, I am the one they are rejecting, not you. So what happened was um, the people had came to the prophet Samuel and said, listen, Samuel, we don't want you as our king. We just don't. You're getting old. Your son's not really tripping, you know, ain't, ain't, ain't really uh, living for God. We want a king. And they wanted a king because they had been um, looking at other nations and thought that's what, we, that's what we want. Samuel took it as rejection. He said, wait a minute. Am I? He was thinking, wait a minute. Excuse me. Wait a minute. And God had to reprimand uh, Sam. He said, listen, Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And so I'm going to say this again. How someone treats you is how they feel about themselves, number one. And that's how they treat God. Um, Acts chapter 9. 
uh, verse 4, uh, Saul, who was persecuting the church, God got a hold of him according, according to Acts chapter 9, verse 4. And he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why you persecute my people? Why you persecute my children? He said, why are you persecuting me? Understand this. When someone is persecuting you, no matter who it is, they are not persecuting you. They are persecuting the God in you. Hmm. Interesting. Remember, when people reject the word of God concerning you, watch this, it is not you they are rejecting. They are rejecting God's word. It is not you they are rejecting, it is God. It comes off as disrespectful to you, but they are rejecting God. Uh, the scripture talks about, listen, they hated me and they're going to hate you too. We still talk about manners, common courtesy, and respect. Uh, he said, listen, you, you belong to me, brothers and sisters. Uh, no, he said, you belong to me and because you're going to be hated. And sometimes people will hate you and they'll hate you without cause. If you really look at the people who hated Jesus, it was not necessarily the, the, the world that hated him. It was uh, it was the hypocrisy of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. These are people who had a knowledge uh, a base, a religious spirit. And those are the people who were disrespectful. The, Jesus was put on the cross because of envy of his position of authority. That's what he, that's what he was. Okay. Um, so oftentimes watch this people live in disobedience and rebellion because they don't see the consequences of their own actions um, right away. If you listen to a lot of mess and, and gossip and all those kinds of things, a lot of people think they have a righteous cause, they have a righteous reason. I just did a live recently on gossip rumors and gossip rumors and smear campaigns. And even though this is biblically not, not accurate, you're not supposed to uh, participate in these type of activities. The reason why people do it and they kind of put a righteous cause on it uh, and they don't, be, uh, and they continue on doing this because they think that they are, uh, they don't see the consequences of their own actions. If you did something right away and God reprimanded you right away, but sometimes uh, people just don't obey the voice of God uh, or their consciousnesses are sealed, or they have a spirit of stubbornness, which is rooted in a spirit of pride. Okay. And so oftentimes people live in this area of disobedience and rebellion because they don't see the consequences of their actions or their behavior right away. But remember this, uh, the more you continue to mistreat someone or dishonor them, or just not operate in common, common courtesy or respect, eventually God will rec reprimand you. When we are being led by the Holy Spirit, I'm not truly, and I mean truly led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will convict you. He'll say, hey, you know, you did that, right? Hey, go get it right. Let me give an example of what happened to me. This had to be years ago. My old pastor, many, many moons ago, something that happened and he wanted me to do something. And I don't know if I got my dates wrong or I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I was never a rebellious a person, but whatever happened, I, I was supposed to be someone. And I think I, I, I can't remember if it was either one. I, I, I forgot about either I didn't show up because I didn't get my dates wrong or something happened. And I never get my name was Pastor Sullivan. Pastor. I hardly couldn't sleep at night. I was just, and until I, until I called my pastor up and I said, listen, pastor, I'm so sorry. This is what happened. I was having the hardest time. The Holy Spirit will convict you when you do stuff like that. And I don't know. It was, I don't, I don't remember if it was a misunderstanding or I just decided I wasn't going to go because I was nervous. <laughs> I think it was both, believe it or not. Uh, uh, because they didn't really, I think I was supposed to be somewhere to speak and they didn't really announce it too much and I was supposed to be there now it was a it was I, I just didn't didn't show up but I don't think it was intentional it was a long time ago I'm about 40 I think I was like 18 or 19 at the time and I man I did that thing and I tell you what the burden of the Lord came upon me and I couldn't I just couldn't hardly get myself together honey uh, I never forget another time my old my pastor prior to that uh, other pastor another pastor um her name was uh, Pastor Walker at that time. Now she has since gotten married. It's a, her, her last name has changed. I think it's Moyer now, but Pastor Mark Walker. And she gave us an example how she was working. So at that time we had this little small church. And so she was still working her regular job and she had a coworker. And I never forget this. She had a coworker that started to become real, real nasty to her. And she didn't say anything. She just kept, 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 uh, showing love Christ. She all of a sudden this coworker didn't, didn't show up for work for about three days. 
She said, all of a sudden, she got a call from that coworker. And she said, I don't know what you've done to me, but I'm sorry. And, I don't, and she apologized. She said, I don't know what you've done to me. I haven't been able to sleep for three days. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the Holy, Holy Spirit convicted her uh, about how she treated my pastor at that time. So to the point that she had to get it right. The woman had stayed out of work for three days, couldn't hardly sleep, honey. I say all that to say it, 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 when someone can be dishonorable and this and disrespectful and, uh, and, and uh, not show common courtesy or respect and they can sleep at night. You know, they all say, let little say, they'll say little something. They say little something. That says something that says a whole lot, because when you're truly being led uh, by the Holy spirit and when you are truly sensitive and even that, if you're not, you just feel a level of conviction. Now, not condemnation, but conviction. Condemnation, you're going to be condemned. You're not going to hell, okay? We're not going to do that. We do have grace. But conviction says, wait a minute, you, you're doing something wrong. And that's not right. Even when it comes to our direction I'm of the of persuasion, when you are really willing to hear from God, he'll give you clarity of instruction. What should I do? Where should I go? Who should I connect with? How should I build this business? And God will give you clear instructions. And oftentimes we are accustomed to not uh, leaning in or not being obedient to the voice of God to the point where our consciousness becomes seared. And we know we don't think we're doing anything wrong. But best believe, beloved, best believe you cannot mistreat anybody, children, widows, or people of God long-term and expect to get away with it. We still talk about manners, common courtesy, and respect. Come on here with me. Now, this is another pet peeve of mine. This is, so I gave you point number one. Uh, and again, this is going to be a hodgepodge of just examples. Uh, we said how when, uh, when people uh, reject uh, reject you or the word of the Lord concerning you, um, then they're rejecting God's instructions. When they persecute you, they're persecuting God. Really, we just, we, so this is why you can't take things uh, offensively. You should just forgive quickly. It doesn't necessarily mean you do have to be, uh, uh, that you are a doormat. It does not mean you cannot confront someone with love to say, hey, this is not okay. Um, but it does mean that you don't want to hold resentment or un, or uh, resentment or unforgiveness um, in your heart, okay? You do want to stay faithful, but this is my pet peeve. Okay. Now, some of you don't think it's rude, but I think it's just rude. It just really is. It just happened to me. Don't give unsolicited advice. Let me give you a scripture to back it up. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 2, and it reads, Let your words be few. Let your words be few. Now, hmm, 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 hmm. Let your words be few. Now, I'm a therapist, y'all, and I see people. That need therapy. I want to, you know, when you understand what your spiritual gifts are, mine is discerning of spirits. So <laughs> one of them is a word of wisdom, which is why if you listen to a lot of our talks, I have a lot of wisdom. That's my gift. And then word of knowledge. Word of knowledge works wonderfully, hunty. Okay. When you are in the counseling field, because people come in with symptoms, you got to get to the root. Okay. So word of knowledge. And then of course there's prophecy. So someone can literally walk into a room and my spirit says, you know, that person is emotionally wounded. They need healing. God, uh, my name Samaria need, needs what means watchman. Okay, that means God gives me discerning what to do, how to do it, and then warning of how to warn people. Now I I, I see everything. I don't necessarily speak on every anything, but I see it. And sometimes I just pray about it, and then God releases me to give wise counsel concerning it. Um, then I will. So I say all that to say, uh, it is rude. I would never walk up to somebody and just give them random advice particularly when I don't know them. I would really, really, really have to hear from the Holy Spirit. I'm not, and I'm saying not, not saying I'm better, bigger than everyone. I would really, 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 really have to hear from God concerning the matter. Really, I would. Okay. I've had experiences and I, I don't know <laughs> why this is that people tend to underestimate because you meet me in real life. I'm really quiet and, and they just, feel the need to give me random advice. I don't need advice on relationships. I, I, I do not need advice on, <laughs> on uh, how to build my business. Now, I'm now granted, I thank God for the business that I had, but I have people like how you should spend your business, what you should do, and you don't even have a business. We live in a very presumptuous generation that thinks just because I think a thought just random advice. I had someone recently, and the sweet person, but it was it was one thing after the other thing. You ought to do this, and you need to do that, and don't do this. And I just wanted to be like, if you don't shut up, 
I'm a 40 year old woman. Shut up. And the advice, the advice was off. Off. Do not give unsolicited advice. Some people give advice because they have to hear themselves think. They don't like the, the Bible says, let your words be few. That means shut up. I'm not going to walk up to somebody and be like, listen, the whole, you need to go to therapy. But I see people all the time, honey, that need therapy. And that's not an insult. Sometimes you start telling people they need therapy, right? And even though you are a therapist, they get offended. Because in the in off, in, uh, in black culture, people just don't want to go to therapy, unfortunately. I see people at church all the time that need to go to therapy. I'm like, you did that? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? I see people trying to lead praise and worship. Need therapy. I see broken people all the time. I see the <laughs> I don't I see things that need to be fixed all because a lot of times when I see things, I don't necessarily formulate my own opinion. I say, God, that's kind of off. What is going on here? He'll tell me. When God can trust you with other people's secrets, he will tell you what is going on with them. I don't blast it out. I pray against it. I pray for them. He'll say, pray, send the word. But it is rude, brothers and sisters, and it's not using good manners to just randomly start giving people advice, particularly when it's beyond your scope of influence. Now, does that mean you have to have all the um the information and and they have to go through all the steps to be able to give counsel that they've gone through no because the bible talks about how uh, uh samuel again going back to samuel when he was a young kid god spoke to him and said hey you need uh, i need you to tell eli x y and z tell eli that his sons are in rebellion and he's getting ready uh, and consequences are getting ready to come because because he has not corrected his sons now eli was a child at the time Right, he was a child at the time, and Eli uh, was not running nothing. He wasn't running the whole uh, organization. He was serving in the temple, and God gave him. So there are times when God would send someone to give like some some wisdom or some warning or things like that. But just randomly, I just decided because I want to give you advice. Don't do that, y'all. It's just rude and it's annoying. And then we're looking at you crazy. Just learn how to be quiet, okay? Listen first. <laughs> Listen, your words and your actions must be consistent. So watch this, because otherwise we think you're a liar. Now, let me, I know y'all are going to like me. I'm coming hard today. If you keep saying one thing, right, and if we observe your behavior uh, doing another thing, uh, we don't, you don't, you don't, you lose people's trust. People don't believe you, like the person that cries wolf. If you say it, um, I love everybody, I love everybody, I love everybody, and we can see you mistreating people. Okay, we can see that whether it be on social media or in life, we tend not to believe what you say. Okay, uh, if you say I love people and I'm so respectful, but you dishonor uh folk or you dishonor the lady that's uh, that's uh, at the restaurant who's waiting on you, things of that nature. But I love people. I love people. I love people. We're not going to believe you nor trust what you have to say because your words and your actions don't line up. They don't line up. So if you say I trust God then we need to see how you trust God. If you say, I treat everyone with respect and I honor everyone, we need to see that displayed in everybody. Okay? Now, so there are some people, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, you can't get it right, but I'm saying there should be a display of honor to everyone when your words are are few, but uh, people, because remember, um, everybody, um, everyone's watching you, either they don't speak. If they don't, either they don't say anything to you, they're observing you and they're observing how you handle things, how you handle situations, and how you treat people, uh, even if they're not saying uh, saying it to you. And that's one thing the Lord spoke to me um, so many years ago, which I don't really care if you like me or not. I just don't. But um, I, I've always been someone's very quiet. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Samaria, people see you. They just don't say that they see you, but they see you. Okay. <laughs> uh, point number five, this is manners, common courtesy, and respect. Y'all speak to everybody. Do we have to say that? Now, I've had time. Let me just put some Mary on total pole. I've always been very quiet all of my life, okay? Always been very quiet. And so there has been times when I've been shy. There's been times I walk into a room, maybe I didn't speak to everyone. Maybe my mind is elsewhere. Something uh, along those lines. You know what I mean? Particularly when I was young. And maybe if, if I didn't speak to someone, 
uh, I'm my mind may have been elsewhere. Or if I'm if I'm uh, if I walk up to a room right and there is a a large group of people there, you know, I've had time I had speaking engagements and there's a room full of people. I'm not gonna go and I'm not, I can't obviously I can't speak to everybody. Like you see what I'm saying? I I get the balance and all that, but. Yeah. You're rude if on a consistent basis you see the same people and you don't speak to the same people at all. That's rude. If <laughs> even if you walk through right, we make eye contact, you say, hey, good morning, good morning. Now, one or two or three times, okay, we got you. But when you're doing a when you it's a consistent pattern. It's a, and when you have a consistent pattern, we have a consistent issue with character. Okay, all right. So, watch this point number six subliminal messages are not a form of effective communication. Subliminal messages <laughs> are not a form of effective communication. Okay, let's do this. So, like, you know, people post on social media these passive aggressive, like, who's she talking about? You know, you be you know, people. You you know your favorite couple that broke up because they post. You know, uh, I need someone to treat me right. All the now, now let me again. Let me give you the balance part of that. Sometimes when you're naturally, when you are, sometimes people imply certain things that have never been said. You, you talk about me. You talk about me. We don't actually know you. <laughs> and I've had so I've had this habit because remember I deal with human behavior and at the at the essence at the core I deal with the pain and the hurts of human behavior, and I tend to speak on that. Okay, I just tend to speak on that, not necessarily tell them someone's individual story, but I speak on that. But I'm not doing a whole YouTube video or YouTube because I'm trying to speak on your situation. I don't know you. Okay, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you really are trying to use subliminal messages <laughs> to convey a point and it's really passive aggressive. Okay, we got to figure what's going on. We should not, listen, I understand. Listen, y'all, I understand. Listen, you listen. I understand. <laughs> uh, that we all go through things in life, right? This is life being life, but we should not, and I understand we got to use the gifts of the spirit, but I wish you not have to use the uh, word of knowledge, gifts of the spirit, and go into prayer to figure out what the heck is going on with you. It's called effective communication. Let me give you an example. I had a colleague of mine, not even a colleague, we're not even friends. You know, I don't know how to identify the person. And they were very, very like passive aggressive. Like literally when I say, I was trying to be friendly because you know, <laughs> If you give me energy, I give it back. Not not like, whoa, whoa. I'm not like, if you if you like act like you don't know me and you passive, I'm I'm gonna give it to you back. If you don't know me, I don't know you. If you act like you know what I'm saying, I'm saying. So I was kind of being nicest individual, a, a guy, and he was very like standoffish. And it kept going on and on. And then it got to the point where I had an ex-friend. He would be like, we would be like, we were somewhere together. He would walk up to her and be like, oh, hey, you know, how you doing? And me, he'd be like, hey. Barely speak. Uh, like our, so, her, our Facebook post. And I was like, what? Now I'm not jealous. But I'm like, Lord, is it is it me? What's going on here? Did he just really walk into a room, speak to my homegirl next to me and barely speak to me? I, is it me? Am I tripping? And again, the Lord told me, no, that he had some struggles. And I think at the end of the day, he was, in, I think at the end of the day, he was intimidated by me. And instead of him saying that he was intimidated by me, which I don't know why you'd be intimidated by me. I'm not an intimidating person, but okay, we'll go with it. He was intimidated, but he had other things going on with him. And so and eventually, I just ended up doing, uh, 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 just not even dealing with the person because I don't deal with disrespect and passive aggressiveness is a form of disrespect. And two, um, I don't care. I just don't do disrespect. And passive aggressiveness, brothers, is, is a form of disrespect. And so, but the Lord told me what was going on. So eventually he reached out to me and I explained to him. I said, what in the world is going on? I was like, I haven't, I haven't done nothing to you. I haven't uh, said nothing out the way to you. You acting like we had beef. I'm just being friendly, but you can't even be friendly to me. What's what's the problem? And he started telling me all the things that was going on with him. And I said, okay, cool. I forgive you. Keep moving. I had already forgiven them. I don't deal with the person to this day because 
regardless of what, how what you go through in life, like you, I don't do the, I don't do disrespect. And passive aggressive is again is a form of disrespect. See, I go through things in life, but you would never know it. Uh, I have gone through things just because I have a degree or a business is not me. I don't go through things. I just had to show up. I got to keep showing up. I got to keep showing up. I got to keep showing up for my clients. I got to keep showing up whether I'm based or not. I have to keep showing up with a smile on my face. I've had times where I have felt like my guts are going to come out of my chest because I was in so much pain, but I keep showing up because pain does not stop or trials and, 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 and does not stop because you get uh, a, a degree or you got a career. I keep showing up. And so I have no... Um, I have very little compassion if you or empathy for people who think because I've gone through things, I get to mistreat or mishandle someone because I'm in pain. It sounds very selfish to me. So I don't deal with the person. I forgave him, keep moving, uh, go live your best life and do whatever it is that you do. But the point I had to understand was that I had to learn uh, was that um, sometimes people go through things that have nothing to do with you but you have to still show up and be kind and be courteous. And then behind the scenes, when you have to pray, when you got to go see a therapist, uh, when you have to um, uh, do things that, to get to you, that's when you let it all ha- uh, hang loose and let it be free. But don't ever disrespect someone because of what you're going through, because you dismiss the fact that some other other people are going through. And the, because other people are going through, we have to still show up, be kind, be courteous, and have a smile on our face to everybody. You don't get brownie points. And you don't get to pacify or you don't get to be dishonorable because you decided, because I'm going through things, I can be disrespectful to someone else. No more. And I talk about this in the, in the spirit of reconciliation, uh, how, um, you know, you come to someone, you confront them about, hey, how you were treated. And they say, well, my childhood was bad. I got grace on it. No, 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 no. You going through trauma. You, uh, your childhood being bad, your past season in life. What you've gone through does not give you the green light to be rude to anybody. All right, David Christian. All right. No one should have, okay, I said that. <laughs> I said no one should have to use the gifts of the spirits. Okay, let's talk about self-control. Okay. Uh, we're not righteous and ratchet. That's a hot mess of express. I want you to stop breathe and think about this we teach our kids who have adhd stop think about this thing first stop this don't make sense stop this is not common sense stop and think about it don't be brass with your words stop think about it first and that's how you know because sometimes someone can make it so angry you're like oh yeah and you don't realize wait a minute (laughs) i didn't say something out of pocket i shouldn't have said so you stop and think about it James chapter one, verse 19 says, be quick to listen, be slow to speak and be slow to get angry. The Holy Spirit gives us not only conviction when we do something right, when we do something wrong, excuse me, but self-control. Well, I just had to say what I had to say. No, you don't. Well, sometimes you got to lay people out. No, you don't. You can be stern. You can say this is not happening past today. I said what I said sternly, but you better let's take this outside. Let's go where it be, but be and fight. You ain't gotta do all that. Because the gifts of the spirit give us what? Self-control. Okay. All right. Point number eight. Don't assume, but still hold others accountable. Don't make assumptions about other people. Okay, and what their character is, but you still have to hold people accountable. Yeah, I understand, like my a gentleman that I met, I understand that you're going through things, but this is still not okay. Or whatever. I understand that you had a bad childhood. However, that does not mean that this is okay. Okay, so I can, uh, you know, it, you, you get you get what I'm saying, darling. Okay. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, KJV says, only a fool answers before he heareth it. It is a follow and a shame to him. The CSB version, uh, and I can't remember what CSB, I want to say, is it, I can't remember what the CSB stands for, but um, we'll go with it. 
One who an one who gives an answer before he listens. This is foolishness and a disgrace to him. So don't make assumptions. So that means this, and you have to listen first. And remember, there's a difference between listening versus hearing. Right? I mean, excuse me, listening. Excuse me. There, let me say that again. There's a difference between listening to respond versus listening to be heard. Okay. When someone listens to respond, they're like, oh, and they're making assumptions. This is why you gotta listen first. Okay. Now still hold people accountable because I'm telling you, no matter how way, how how many ways you cross this I dot this T. No matter how many ways you dot this I and cross this T, it's still wrong. But I'm still gonna listen to you, hear you out. Okay. Remember this, treat everybody how you want to be treated at the end of the day. Treat everybody with kindness. And I mean everybody. Now, sometimes, can we be honest? It's hard. I'll be the first to, it is hard. Now, people that have never done you anything wrong, it ain't really all that hard. But people that have I you have people look you dead in your face. Hey, you people somebody look you dead in your face and you know they lied. And you say, uh huh. You can treat. Now, again, treat everyone with kindness, treat everyone with respect. It does not mean, and you can be friendly. It does not mean that we're going to be friends, but I can be friendly because I, for me, other persuasion, trust is big for me. I don't give me, I don't trust is like a gift to me. I give it to who I choose to, and I don't trust everybody easily. Okay. Now, now I have scripture to back that up. I did do a teaching. Uh, uh, I don't remember when, but it was called trust issues. And it talks about how, um, uh, uh how, once Jesus began to attract the crowd, it talks about how Jesus, they trusted Jesus. But he didn't trust them because he knew what was in their heart. So just because someone trusts you does not mean you're obligated to trust them. And if you give me reason not to trust you, I'm just not going to trust you. Okay. However, you can still, you don't got to be uh, washing your eyes and trust <laughs> and all this mud and be crying. No. You can be kind to everyone, even the least of these things, even the least of these. Be kind to everybody. Even people with bad reputations, be kind to them. Now, again, does not mean because I'm kind and friendly that I'm going to be friends with everybody. Everybody ain't going to come to my house. Everybody's not going to come and have us eat dinner together. Everybody would know. I have somebody right now, good person, but they didn't show me enough of their character. I'm still going to be friendly. I'm still, hey, good morning. How are you? Still going to be kind. Are we going to be friends? Nope. They may think we're friends, but we're not. Because guess what? I'm going to be kind. And I'm going to be courteous. And I'm going to show everyone kindness and respect. Because you never know. Sometimes when people are ratchet, you never know how you are leading them to Christ just by how you treat them. Now, you do have to set some boundaries. Once, once they start crossing those boundaries, you have to say to them, hey, no, we, we're not going to be hanging out. But treat everybody with kindness. Because you never know how you can influence them into Christ. Let the Holy Spirit convict you. And when the Holy Spirit tells you, hey, that's wrong, don't do it, do it this way, follow the Holy Spirit's instructions. Follow the instructions, brothers and sisters. Follow the instructions, okay? Follow instructions. You cannot move forward in your life uh, in disobedience. If God told you to go right and you go left, you're not going to move forward. You do, we, do, you, we, we do know that, right? Come on there. I'm being silly, but come on. Come on, Christians. I love us. But we will shout to the high heavens, prophesy to the high heavens, do the absolute most in active disobedience. God told you, leave that relationship alone. You know what we do? We'll get to shout and fold and fib and oh, I love my shout. We'll run around the church. You know, I had a friend like that years ago, was in a real bad relationship, terrible. The relationship was, was weird. And and the God kept telling the person, hey, this not this not your person. Got to church, <laughs> left the church, called the old boy up right at right at the hey, listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> you have to treat God with respect, and treating God with respect means obeying the instructions that He told you. Because I, God, I'm not ready for that. What did God tell you to do? And when we don't disobey God, brothers, no matter what it looks like. No matter what it sounds like, no matter how much you shout, no matter how much you sow, no matter what you do, you're not going to move forward 
and disobedience. That is not how grace works, okay? Grace does not give you the license to do what you want. Pick up my book, Grace Set Up the Bounds, because I broke that down. Because a lot of times when people also, they do whatever they want, even though God has given them clear instructions, they think God wants God still going to bless them. And number two, they think that they're okay. And they think they, they want to move forward and not realize the reason why things in your life are stalled and stifled and technically is not really moving forward like it should is because you're an act of disobedience. Disobey God first and then move forward. Remember this, honor is always the way of the kingdom. Honor, how we get elevated uh, if it's really God. Now, you know, I talk about the difference between favor versus favoritism. If there's no manipulation uh, involved, no clout chasing, no office politics, no things like that. How God elevates us to our next phase in life is through honor, okay? All right, y'all. Y'all know this has been fun. Uh, so uh, quick uh, announcements here. I did um, point out, if you follow me on any in, in social media platforms, uh, there is uh, this uh, workbook that's out that my pastor has been breaking down uh, called the Shadow Workbook that is actually very demonic. Um which we know they teach a lot of that stuff and in, in, in like a lot of the trauma work sh- workshops. And um, I realized I have done a lot of uh, workbooks myself. And the reason why people are being attracted to these types of workbooks uh, is because of these demonic ones, the shadow workbook, which is demonic, is because they're seeking healing. And so what I do as a therapist is I try to understand, um, even if I don't agree with it, why people are prone to certain things. And I think it's also really important as a body, uh, when you're a Christian, uh, you have to um, speak on what is not wrong. I mean, excuse me, speak on what is wrong, but also at least at, at some point acknowledging why. And a lot of people have experienced emotional hurts, emotional pains, particularly any type type of trauma. And that's why they are, um, um, really, um, what's the word? Really focusing on this particular book, and so I thought after hearing this, these teachings, and I haven't listened to all of them in detail. I thought to create some some ones of my own that are faith based, and I realized, wait a minute, Samaria, I don't advertise these often. I've already done so. I did one in twenty fourteen. I did one in twenty seventeen. I did another one in twenty eighteen. And so I posted some links. I posted as well. These are actual uh, healing uh, workbooks that are, are meant to invite you to a closer relationship with Christ Jesus and with His Holy Spirit, while also dealing with your trauma, your abuse, your neglect, and all those things. Uh, one is called um, the process of emotional healing. I, I posted a link to that. Um, Couches and conversations. Uh, the individual workbook, uh, and I will post links to. It. And I did another one called uh, "Fight Fear with Faith for Those Who Experience Trauma," but it has a similar premise. Remember, everything that the secular world does, it just tends to take from what, uh, from what um, the answers found in Christ, and they and they introduce the demonic world. So this will bring you back or, uh, to a closer relationship with Christ. It has uh, journaling prompts. Uh, it has scripture meditations and we don't meditate like the, you know, like this new age we have, we meditate on scripture, a reflective journaling and all that. And so I'm going to post those links below. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to www.samaricobra.com. But these are uh, alternative. This actually came up before shadow workbooks, but again, I'm not known. I just write what God tells me to write. I put it out there, but there are alternatives that was meant to bring you uh, into healing and wholeness through Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, what else other announcement? Um, I think that is it. Oh, my book, uh, Esther's Grace will be out shortly. It is a powerful book. I love it. Tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> if you read this tomorrow, I was born on October 13th. Uh, if you want to request speaking engagements or look at my other material, some of the things I do go to www.drsimeriacobra.com. I am a trainer. Uh, I do have, um, uh, a, a similar training that's also helped to uh, meant to help people uh, walk through the healing process that goes along with a lot of the workbooks that I put out there. If you are a licensed pro- professional and you want to be trained in uh, inner healing and counseling in clinical settings, I'm the only therapist. You can find inner healing training anywhere. I'm the only therapist that does inner healing clinical settings, uh, which is available by insurance. And you can go to get www.trainingchristianleaders.com. It is a, it is, uh, I just put it on discount. It's, it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it, I just put it on discount, a thousand dollar discount. Okay. And that will not stay there long. Um, but www.trainingchristianleaders.com. And if you're located in the state of North Carolina, um, or you want to get to the state of North Carolina, I do accept most insurances on that is www.kenyoncreativecounseling.com. That means if you're located in a different state, uh, I cannot see you via telehealth. You would have to physically come to the actual office. Okay. 
But that's www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. We're back in the day, another time, another banger. And I'm not sure I may do, I did another book uh, called Heyman's Plot. Um, a previous book and I'm doing, I uh, finished one called Esther's Grace. So I don't know. I don't know what our next one will be, but stay tuned. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all I'm so close. I'm so close. Okay. God bless you. We're back in the day, another time, another banger y'all. Bye.